What's going on guys? Let me tell you something right now. If you guys are looking to keep your home, skin, hair smelling fresh and clean, then you need pound for pound the best fragrance products in the world, and that is Ash Kickin'. I'm talking about everything you need to create a comfortable home living environment and create a comfortable space for entertaining, you need Ash Kickin'. Pound for pound the best incense burners in the world, home fragrance products, and health and beauty products, go to ashkickin.com. Put in this promo code DBN317 and you'll get 10% off of all your orders. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on guys? So the WBO lightweight champion of the world, Terry Flanagan, who by the way has the longest unblemished record in British boxing right now, and he's one of the best fighters out there, very talented fighter from the UK, Terry Flanagan, he actually broke down all the other champions when it comes to who's the weakest champion to who's the strongest champion in the lightweight division. Now, what really got my attention when it comes to Terry Flanagan is when he completely dominated the former undefeated uh, Diego Magdaleno, who was a Las Vegas uh, prospect, you know, slash contender, and the way Terry Flanagan just ran through him. I was really impressed. He's a very good counterpunch, and he has some good power as well. So Terry Flanagan, he basically did a breakdown on all of the other champions in his division, from who he thought was the strongest at the division to who he thought was the weakest at the division, obviously not including himself. Now, even though I don't agree with everything Terry said, he gave a very analytical breakdown on all of these champions. So let's go ahead and start with what he said about Jorge Linares, the WBA champion. Quote, I have to say I was very impressed with Linares in his first fight with Corolla, and I think he'll probably win the rematch the same way. Corolla had the right tactic, but it just wasn't his night. And then Terry Flanagan, he goes on to say, but he's 31 now and surely coming to the end of a very hard career. All his defeats were by stoppage, so I'll be looking to hurt him from the off. End quote. He said a little bit more, but I'll go ahead and put the transcript in the description so you guys can read everything he had to say. So then we go to Robert Easter, and this is where it gets pretty interesting. Listen to what he had to say about Robert Easter. Quote, I've only seen clips of his fight with Cruz, but he's meant to have looked very good. I saw all of his title win against Richard Comey last year. That was a very close fight that could have went either way, but Komei is a very dangerous guy, a ridiculous puncher. The result could have gone either way, but Easter stood up well to a big puncher and he showed a lot of balls and heart. That fight was pretty hectic, so Easter proved his stamina and he must have a great chin because the African can really whack with his right hand. Everyone else was avoiding him and he's talking about Komei. And then he concludes by saying this, quote, that said, I believe he's the weakest of us four current champions. He's certainly the least experienced and I jump at a chance to fight him. I've been calling for unification fights for years and of course I travel to the States to secure them. End quote. That's what he had to say about Robert Easter. Then last but not least, he goes to Mikey Garcia. This is what he had to say about Mikey. Quote, He's the best of the other champions, the strongest, the most rounded lightweight other than myself. He looked really good knocking out Deion Zatichinen, but the Montenegrin was made for him. I'd have done something similar. Mikey takes them all out, but I want to test myself against the best. Let's see how good he is when you throw him back at him." End quote. Now, once again, I just read a little bit of the entire interview but once again, you guys can go in the description box and read the entire transcript of what he had to say. But that's pretty much the gist of what Terry Flanagan had to say. He really, really praised Mikey Garcia, as you guys can see. And he believed that Robert Easter was the weakest of the bunch. But to me, it really doesn't make a lot of sense, especially when he says that Jorge Linares is old and on his way out and all of his losses are by stop it. Then he talks about the chin, the balls, the heart, and the skill set that Robert Easter showed against Richard Comey, I understand how he can have 
Robert Easter as the weakest of the four champions in a division. Now, it's funny because I always thought that it was Mikey Garcia and Robert Easter that were the two best, and Terry Flanagan would be somewhere in third or fourth on that list. Now, when Terry Flanagan talked about Mikey Garcia, he praised him so much, it almost sounded to me like Terry didn't even believe that he could even beat Mikey Garcia. You know, when he said, you know, I wanna test myself, et cetera, et cetera. That certainly doesn't seem like he has the confidence that he could beat a Mikey Garcia. Now, going back to what he said about Robert Easter, you know, I think sometimes it's very misleading when you are basing how good a fighter is or how much of a threat he is to you just based on his experience. First of all, when Terry Flanagan talks about Robert Easter's experience, I truly believe that Robert Easter has beat better competition than Terry Flanagan. I mean, he had the undefeated Richard Comey that he had to beat, one of the most avoided fighters in that division, by the way. And before he beat Richard Comey, he knocked out Arginis Mendez, a guy that fought Francis Bartholomew twice and went the distance with him. So with that being said, I believe just by looking at their resumes by way of contrast, Robert Easter probably has more experience, worst case scenario, at least the exact same amount of experience, if not more, than Terry Flanagan. And on top of that, I pick Robert Easter to beat Terry Flanagan. You know, and this is not for every fighter, but sometimes it's really dangerous to just try to base how good a fighter is off of his experience. I mean, I can give you guys so many examples. Tank Davis comes to mind when I think of him going into that fight with Jose Pedraza. Everyone was saying that before that, Tank Davis, he had fought no one. And a lot of people were picking Pedraza to beat Tank Davis because of his lack of experience. I think a lot of people forget that almost every fighter had to make that transition from facing nobodies to facing serious competition. I mean, we've seen Floyd Mayweather do it. We've seen Roy Jones do it. We've seen Eric Morales do it. I remember when Eric Morales was um, going against, I believe it was Daniel Zaragoza. And that's all people were talking about before this fight was youth versus the experience. And Eric Morales, he ended up knocking out experience that night. So you can't always base things off of who you feel doesn't have the experience. But with that all being said, I tell you right now, Terry Flanagan, he has definitely promoted himself in this article because this makes me want to see him in some unification bouts right away now, since he done did all this talking about who the best is and who the weakest is. So we'll see what happens in the future. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. This is Bobby, and you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation.